a complete tutorial acrylic tutorial of this was broadcast September the 7th 2021 unfortunately I hit that live button a little too soon and there's about 15 minutes that I chopped out of the front and uh, we're picking up into the meat of the tutorial here <laughs> oh mercy it's painting from beginning to end this morning and uh, the other pieces are up for voting still for our other three Tuesdays we're doing fall and the ladies will be on the YouTube <laughs> uh, the last two weeks uh, computer crash had to have computer work done retrieve files you know that's a panicky thing computers are wonderful uh, when they work you know um, and when they don't it's a very scary thing it's a very scary thing all right I'm gonna put a tone on this and for you newbies um, I like to do that on all kinds of pieces, not um, just florals, but landscapes and everything else. And I'm gonna use some yellow ochre and I'm watering it way down. You see this? And I'm just randomly putting it all over the surface. I'm getting rid of that white. And this is creating a mid-tone, all right? And as light as this is, watch this. I'm gonna just take a paper towel and finish this out. So basically I'm staining the canvas, okay? And I'm also taking off any excess paint so this will dry quickly. And I'm coming around the edges, uh, which I like to do on any piece that I do and these gallery wrap canvases are ideal gallery wrap means that the staples are on the back so you've got a nice clean surface on the edges and if you either you can you know you can paint them black or I like to bring my design right over the edge okay so I have pulled a lot of the pigment off I've got a nice stain of yellow ochre. I'm going to stick that down in front of the fan to let that dry. It'll take a few minutes and nothing more, and we'll be ready to go, okay? Um, in the meantime, here is our design. It's kind of just a cluster of sunflowers. Excuse my, yeah, I stuck my hand in the paint this morning. Uh, um, I supply a black line to every design that we do. And you will notice that there has uh, dotted lines. And that helps for folks with their drawing abilities. I mean, if you have a printer, you can probably download this image straight off of Facebook and print it on your printer. And you can go up or you can go down um, size-wise if you're savvy enough on how to uh, work that machine. Um, if not, you can freehand by looking at this and see the point of this is right away. You look at this. Here is the center of the painting. This paint, this flower is not exactly dead center. Okay. It's down and over a little bit. So when my piece dries, I have a watercolor pencil. This is just kind of a lavender, a gray and um, I'm going to sketch this design onto that canvas by looking at this grid. And I'm going to take one little quarter at a time. Okay? And that's how you eat that elephant one bite at a time. Is you just take that, that quarter right there. And then visually you can also give that one a um, half vertically and horizontally. And then you can see that almost the entire um, bulk of this particular part of the design is right up here in this quarter. 
This one only has a little hint of that leaf. This one's totally blank, and this one has a little bit of the petals. All right, so you break it down that way, and it makes it much easier to change, um, to, to, to draw and maneuver this. Hey, Nina, good morning. Kathy, I'm so glad to see you. Pat, all right. Hey, guys. Uh, Janelle, awesome. I am so glad you guys are here. I'm hoping um, that everybody also had a break because I didn't see much activity <laughs> at all on the paint logs. You, you know, you get kind of afraid if you take a break. And you're afraid everybody's just going to disappear. Oh, wow. You guys have wowed me. Not only did you not disappear, but whenever I said I was coming back in and, and set a date, boy, everybody started commenting. I'm glad. I may have to take more vacations <laughs> so I could get some activity. You guys have got to start posting your paintings. You just really got to. All right. So, a... Um, I, I usually don't even bother measuring. I just eyeball it. I, you know, and here's my center line going this way. Here's my center line going that way. You know, it's not rocket science. We're not going to get so exact. But here, now, look, guys, this is one quarter of this piece, but it's still proportionate. So this square is going to be equivalent to this square. All right. So if I come over here and I'm looking at this and I say, all right, well, here is that part. Here comes the circle right around there and there. Okay, so now I've got some guide marks. And um, the reason I'm doing this with watercolor pencil for any of you newbies is it is very easy to... Um, it's not like a regular, okay, this is watercolor. I take water and look, see there, it'll just disappear. It's like it's racing, uh, and not so with a lead pencil, unless you want that linear quality in your piece and those lead pencil lines to show, this is a great alternative, okay? And then with our sunflower, these petals radiate like this, okay? So as you're drawing them, they're basically going to be coming across. Yeah, crickets. I hear crickets. It's that season. All right. So I am going to flesh out these petals. And because we've got this ochre on here, we've already got a mid-tone. So we can go up and we can go down with our colors uh, we're already ahead of the game, okay? Um, having that mid-tone down. I hope everybody had a good, safe Labor Day. Uh, we barbecued. And uh, we barbecued a number of things that came out of the garden. Man, that is such a satisfying thing to... Um, with watermelon for dessert. First year, I have actually successfully grown watermelon. And uh, that's really cool. The boys really enjoyed it. We've been, it takes about a month or so for watermelon to mature from whenever they show up. And keeping Asher from destroying them has been a, he's done pretty good though. He's done pretty good. But he has a tendency to want to check them out and you can't manhandle those little baby watermelon <laughs> all right and then see this is coming from almost the edge here all the way over so i'm gonna put this line in to remember it's gonna it'll just disappear with with paint over it and I can get away with that. And then I'm radiating those petals. And I'm not sure what that little band of green uh, leaves. 
Later, I will go, I'll be harvesting from my garden, my big sunflower heads. Uh, there's some incredible ones this year. I'll share those. But my favorite sunflower to grow is Russian mammoths. And um, when they're blooming, they are just unbelievable. They're just so spectacular. But whenever they're on their way out, and we've had a lot of rains and uh, Ida uh, came, some of the remnants of Ida came through with some stronger winds and a heavy rains. They get heavy and they topple over. Um, I haven't seen many chickadees this year. Usually the chickadees are my nemesis. They are robbing those sunflower seeds uh, and often clean out a head before I have a chance to harvest it. I haven't really seen those, but I uh, have been enjoying the hummingbirds. I've got a couple of hummingbird feeders. I got a patio table right outside my back door. When it's super hot, that's where I live in the summer. And I take my meals there. This morning it was a little nippy, so it's amazing how September comes and a shift in weather. Let me check my uh, let me check my comments and see what's happening here. Uh, oh, yep, Nina, exactly right. Uh, our standard size, uh, hey, Gloria, good morning. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, our standard size that I use here is 11 by 14. Uh-oh, cats, they're coming. Get my... <sighs> got kittens back in the spring and uh, they are uh, they love to come in here when I'm at the table and get in my lap and sit on the computer the laptop it's a mess okay <laughs> uh, let me get go away go away go away go away get uh, all right here where was I Oh my goodness. Oh, the brain doesn't work. Okay, ochre base. All right. Let's 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 paint. All right. We are going to paint and I'm going to lay in some dark. I'm going to lay in uh, uh a little bit more on the petals. I've got some, okay, my palette. Cadmium yellow, oak, yellow ochre, uh, cadmium red, uh, cerulean blue, thalo blue, dioxide purple, uh, thalo green, and white. All right. And I'm taking some of my ochre and my red. And a little bitty touch of purple to dull that down and kind of make a brown. And no, you can't see where I'm mixing paint. Okay. I didn't know if I had that in the picture frame. Uh, and I'm going to put some of that right down here where those petals connect to the center and I'm also going to put some in the, the center it's okay newbies this is a layers game I do layer 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 layers acrylics um, the good thing about acrylics is they dry fast and the bad thing about acrylics is they dry fast and um, I try and show you how to work with that that um, aspect of acrylics to your advantage. And that's why my pieces, my artwork has the kind of look that it has. And um, it's nice because it's also how I can go through and paint a painting in this session when they usually last about an hour and a half. Uh, and we do that from start to finish. So that's another reason for the size. Okay, I'm, I'm going to clear my brush. I put a little bit of that brown down and around. 
And now I'm going to go to pure yellow. Yellow is very translucent. It, in other words, you've got to put lots of layers of yellow to get it to cover. So I always put a little dollop of white to make the yellow a little more opaque. And then I'm also going in, and this is a chisel. This is an old, one of my old brushes. But I like it because it's almost, I can do a lot of kind of like one stroke work with this. All right. No, I hit the button and I was, I was taping live way early. I'm not in, I'm not in the swing of things, people. I got to get back in the swing of things. And I have been trying to, in the last couple of weeks, to do some editing. Um, and I wound up with computer issues, computer problems. Look at that. Okay, we are into the first 15 minutes, and we already have this halfway blocked in. I'm using the, a loaded brush with yellow, a little bit of white. And I'm just beginning to lay in. I'm not doing any kind of detail. I'm not really so concerned about my um, petal shapes. I've got a lot of time and a lot of room to um, redraw those and manipulate them. Right now, I'm just blocking in. All right, so now I've got some of that. Thalo green and yellow, and I'm got see. I have no idea what that was. Cats are they've gotten bigger and they're exploring more. In fact, now I understand I'm in a warehouse and I've got exposed rafters. And the other night I was watching some TV and I happened to look up over the edge and up in the ceiling is a cat walking on the rafters how she got up there i have no idea and this is you know 10 foot walls 14 foot ceilings so however she got up there she also got down because she was back in my lap in no time at all but you know between the cats and the grandkids it's never a dull moment here they really we enjoy, we had a true summer every week uh, mommy was still working her part-time job uh, and taking classes summer classes um, so basically monday through thursday i babysat loosely main thing was just to make sure the grandkids didn't kill each other or wreck something you know they're forever taking stuff apart so it's kind of a crapshoot But I always, I took them to some kind of water or something. Um, there are little lakes around. There's splash pads um, within a 30 mile radius, all the little neighboring towns. And um, that new COVID strain was not such an issue earlier in the summer. So we were feeling a little more relaxed. Not necessarily right now. Um, our neighboring town, Cookville, which has a population of, I don't know, 30,000. It's a, it's a um, university town. And I just got a message from one of my buds that lives over there. The hospital staff is suspending therapies and elective surgeries and a number of things, things that they were doing back in December because they're channeling all of their nursing staff to all the COVID cases that are coming in, flooding in actually again. So folks, and I've already had several acquaintances, not really friends, but you know, friends of friends that I've seen reports that have passed away 
even when they were vaccinated and they got this new strain. So be careful. Be very careful. I want you guys here and painting with me for a long time. Okay. Um, except for the boys, I, I kind of keep a pretty uh, isolated Kind of a hermit <laughs> i've really enjoyed my garden okay so i'm i'm um i'm placing just some again i'm not trying to do any kind of detail anywhere you see in that that's really important folks you want to just get paint all over everywhere uh i i'm my philosophy is not taking and working one piece to finish and then the next piece and next piece. That gets very timely. And what happens is if you get really super detailed here or here or here, then that dictates what you've got to do with the rest of the painting. And sometimes using a much looser, freer approach makes for a much more interesting painting and more expressive and lively. And those are the qualities that I like to see. And that's kind of, you know, and the, how I get that is this approach. All right, let me check my comments. Oh, thanks, Gloria. Yeah, uh, we have for a long time with the hummingbirds uh, we would be sitting at the table and then somebody would say freeze because the hummingbird, we didn't even bother after a while. We just kept going and they, the hummingbirds got used to us. There are several uh, that are here. They're still here right now, but yeah, Nina, they are going to be moving out soon. Um, but uh, they just kept on. The only time we had a little... Uh, change was when I put up an umbrella. I trimmed the tree and I put up an umbrella and they were a little put out with me because I moved things around. Okay, so now I have a, a small brush. It's not quite a rigger. It's not quite a liner. Um, otherwise, the, the bristles would be this long. This is a shorter one, and I'm going to draw a little bit with my brush. All right. So, yeah, now I am beginning to um, be a little more. And I'm, I'm making a point of not having all of those petals exactly the same. We're not doing a cookie cutter drawing. You know, some are a little twisted and others are fat and long. Some are skinny, just like a sunflower. And that really doesn't last very long. It's not too long before those things are pollinated and those petals are going away. But my Russian mammoths, I had a 10-foot pole out there I stuck a kerchief on and would prop it up. Most of the Russian mammoths got to be about 11, 12 feet tall uh, before the seed heads started getting heavy. And then there's another variety. I uh, just took some of our bird seed mix and planted those sunflower seeds. Uh, they are not tall but there's a variety of seeds. Some, the heads got as big as the Russian mammoths, but they were only about three feet tall, the plants. And uh, some were multiple, and those were single head. There was just one flower to each stalk. And then I had others where they were, uh, had multiple flowers. Cat alert. The kittens have been named. Asher um, was pretty adamant that the little girl needed to be Sweetie Cakes. So she is Sweetie Cakes. And the boy is, was my contribution. I laid claim and said, I'm naming the boy and he is Bruiser. They are both just 
alley cats. I answered an uh, ad on a community board here in, in Crossville. And they are a week apart. And uh, they were seven miles apart. So they were definitely not from the same litter or the gene pool. And the purpose was to raise them together. Oh, God. <sighs> and they really do. They, they really have a good time to get to together. And we're going to have one litter of kittens. My daughter experienced that when she was about this age. And I thought that would be a nice thing for the boys to experience, too. A little bit of life. Now, uh... We wound up keeping all the kids. Uh, wasn't planned when my daughter was young. I don't know what we're going to. We'll have to wait and see. All right. So I have taken uh, that kind of brown color, which I made with yellow ochre, a little bit of red, a little bit of purple. Um, if you take yellow and purple, just the two, bright yellow, cad yellow. I'll do it right here real quick. Here's yellow. And it's complementary color, which is purple. All right. And you start mixing the two together, depending on how much yellow is in there, you get sort of a brownish color. The more yellow you put in there, the more golden it becomes. It gets mustardy, kind of mustardy. All right. But you get a nice variety. See, that's just purple and yellow, all of those colors right there. And that's one of the things that we use for. But I've got yellow ochre down, and I kind of throw in a little bit of yellow ochre in there also. I got sidetracked. I'm putting my dark another layer of my seeds. More purple, darker. And see, put, putting this dark in here, I actually am using that to uh, solidify the drawing around this particular um, petal. layers i'm not trying to get it totally dark yet and uh it's going to be dark with kind of a light center but it's all going to be dark brown but look at that see here we are we're still less than 30 minutes out and we've already got a nice um For some people, that might be a finished painting. All right. And we keep moving. We keep moving around. Okay, now I'm going to my greens. And I've got a slightly darker color. I'm still using this little rigger brush, kind of like drawing. And I'm putting a center line. I'm also using that to solidify those petals, the drawing for the petals, okay? Put a little purple in with my green to mute it and darken it. Okay. All right. Moving right along here. I can't remember. One of my buds was saying they were glad to see we were going to start with sunflowers. She has a hard time with sunflowers. So I'm not sure specifically why that is. But hopefully I can help to um, diffuse a little bit of that anticipation she's got and uh, we haven't done anything in the background yet 
the background color. That also is a good way to solidify some of the drawing. And see this go over the edge, over the edge, over the edge, over the edge, over the edge. Da -da 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 -da. Looking good. Okay, I'm gonna get back to where are you? Back to my um this one's a little smaller. It's that angled brush, okay, uh, which is really great for petals. Let me see. Hey, good morning, Cassie. Um, Gloria, what I was outlining with for the green was a darker green. What I was outlining here, I was just making this uh, purple and yellow but I was throwing in a little uh, a little red. So I, it made it into a red brown, okay? And to outline successfully, you wanna really thin that paint down, okay? It's gotta be really sloppy wet, and then you get a good line. And the nice thing about these brushes with the long bristles is you can load up a lot of paint, and that's the thing. You can keep drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. You don't have to dip, dip back into the paint. And that's why I really like these to do the drawing. The longer ones, uh, the are too long and you know it they're good for doing grasses and limbs this is a nice in between uh, because you do a short one you've got to dip into the paint constantly to keep your brush loaded and these carry a little more pigment with them okay okay so i am back to uh, my petals and now i'm pulling out just some white with a little bit of yellow And I'm picking some of the petals, not all of them, mostly the ones that are in this first layer, not these back behind so much. And I'm using this angled brush and I'm kind of just putting in A little bit of a we're still not going to go too detailed yet I'm just putting another layer and like I said yellow is really hard to cover so uh, it takes multiple layers and I'm keep moving I'm gonna keep moving okay And I'm still not detailing, I'm not putting in too much detail, but after I've drawn in those petals, then that gives me kind of a little boundary on doing this next stage. Stuck my elbow in the paint. I ain't gonna. <laughs> um. And hopefully the internet will hold. It's mostly in the evenings I've noticed. Um, I have to switch. I use my phone a great deal for checking you know, social media and things like that. And I'll get a, sig a, a a message that my internet has dropped or been interrupted or an error. And uh, just noticed that more this last week. Uh, so that was why I was given kind of a disclaimer to start with in case we lost our internet. Oh. Okay, let's see. Yes, ma'am, Gloria, I am adding white now. I've got the white um, with a, just a little bit of yellow. 
it's not pure white per se. It's a very light white. All right, so now we've, we're seeing that a little bit brighter. I'm gonna go away and let that set up and dry. So we're gonna move off to, I'm gonna take that dark and add a little more purple. I'm gonna add a little phthalo blue, a little phthalo green, make it much darker much darker and I'm going to add another layer right in here but still kind of slapdash it's not solid and again this one is we see this one kind of in a three-quarter view We don't see any center on that one up there. Okay. And then we're going to go away and let that dry. And I'm going to come down to my leaves. And I've taken my green. I add a little of the yellow ochre to uh, sunflowers. My sunflowers are not green green. They're kind of an army green color. And so adding that ochre to the green helps to achieve that color. That's a little more true. But you know what, guys? You are the queens of your universe, your painting universe. And if you want to make those leaves turquoise or blue, you are most welcome to. And again, I'm just spreading that color all around. Gloria, I've enjoyed seeing your watercolors. She's been doing some watercolors in another location. Uh, okay, for you newbies, and a reminder to you paint-alongs, the paint-along page, the group page, is a format, an area, a platform, I should say, where you can share your version of any paint-along painting. But if there's anything else other than a paint-along, that would need to go to Lynn Looney Studios and not on the paint-along group page. Okay, does that make sense? I keep the paint-along strictly for our designs. And I encourage you, I can't encourage you enough to share. And some of you have been really faithful about that, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, and some of you are just really shy about doing that. But I guarantee you, in all the, we've been doing this now since April of two, 2020, and I've never seen anybody be ugly, negative condescending, rude. I won't tolerate it anyway if it is. Um, that post is coming down. But especially those of you who are beginners and have been posting your works, that's very courageous and I really applaud you. Yeah, cat attack. My grandson thinks it's so mean of me to have a squirt bottle. Get! Get! Go on! They're like the green they're like the grandkids, you know? When you're busy on the phone or having to do something and they know. They just have a sixth sense and they know. Last summer. I don't know. I can't remember when it was. I was here, and I had to have Asher. And, uh, I was babysitting Asher while my class was going. And uh, we've got a room up front 
a small closed-in room. You know, the well, studio is just pretty much an open warehouse, but there's a cup, a bathroom and uh, two small rooms. And uh, I relegate the boys to the rooms when I'm doing this live thing because the temptation is too great for them to come sneaking in. All right, so I am here, and I'm talking, and I'm teaching, and I'm showing what I'm doing here, and I hear the freezer door open and shut. And I suspect what's going on, but I've got to keep teaching because that's too far for me to get up and go check it out. And after a little while, I hear the freezer door open and shut. And I'm thinking, oh, that little sneak. And one more time before the class ends, I hear that freezer door open and shut. Sure enough, um, I'm usually pretty good about, you know, no artificial colors and flavors and all natural, blah, blah, blah. But in the summertime, my, per, my one concession for summer is um, Cool Pups, those long skinny things. He had taken a step stool so he could reach the freezer. He knew where I kept him, and the little sneak was helping himself to Cool Pops during my live broadcast. Because I never give out three, maybe two, never three. And you're supposed to ask permission. All right, so we're, you know, this design is developing really well. Oh. Good morning, Ida. Hey, it's good to see you back. Hope you're doing well, sweetie Pete. Oh, golly gee. Gloria says, I've looked all over the internet, and this, I find, is the prettiest sunflowers. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. How kind. All right. Um, and again, guys, I might miss a comment or two while I'm painting. But after the broadcast, I always go back and check. If you have a question and I don't immediately answer you here, I will after the broadcast. And this particular lesson will be up for 30 days. Okay. Now, um, I can't access these videos under videos at Lynn Looney Studios off of my phone. I can go to Lynn Looney Studios and scroll down till I find the broadcast and I can pull that up. I don't know. It's something to do with the new way Facebook's doing stuff. So if you're having a hard time locating the videos, um, you need to switch to your tower or your laptop. If you don't have the tower or laptop, then you've got to scroll back to this date in the feed. And today is September the 7th. So you just got to go back to Lynn Looney Studios and keep scrolling down until you get to uh, the first week in September and you'll find it. Okay, now I'm heading for my colors in my background. And I've got... Um, uh, cerulean blue that I'm going to lay down first and look at this. I'm going to get much slower when I get over here to the petals and the leaves and then for the rest of it I'm going to just scumble in. I'm using this blue to solidify my drawing. Okay. And this is just first layer blue. First layer. How many layers have we done on the petals and the leaves? Maybe three or four? And see how each layer makes them stronger? That's true everywhere, including the background. Here. 
when I first got the kittens, I wear my apron a lot. It's got lint on it. I took an old piece of fabric and made a pocket on the inside of it. And the first week I had the, each kitten, I would carry them around like a, in a pouch, you know, like a kangaroo mom. And uh, both kittens are very people oriented. They love people and uh, they're very affectionate. In fact, they, they're sleeping on me at night, and as they're getting older and bigger, it's getting to be an issue. They're getting heavy. Uh, and as you know, my daughter and my grandsons live right next door, and I'm having a constant... This is the first time uh, the boys have ever had a cat or kitten as a pet. They've had dogs. And, you know, plus they're pretty much rough housers themselves. Uh, and so I really have to, you know, no, you don't pick the kitten up by its neck. No, you don't pick the kitten up by its arm. No, you don't pick them upside down. You know, it's just constant. But now as the kittens have gotten older and more adventurous, I find that they go over, they follow the boys home. And sometimes if I can't find them, my daughter will text me and let me know that the cats are over there. And I'm going, you know, there's dogs over there. There's nasty little boys over there. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't understand. But as badly as they're treated, they love those boys. Yeah, it's funny. And both kittens have been raised around dogs. That was one of the things I was looking for. And again, I'm using the blue to help to strengthen my drawing. Okay. Now, cool, looking like a painting. Um, and this is gonna be, the blue is gonna be fairly wet. So I'm gonna now take my phthalo blue, my dark blue, and come in here a little closer. Helps to add a little more drama. here and again that is giving me time to let my sunflower petals set up and dry and yes I bell the cats that won't always be the case but for oh you're being a bully cut it out We all go be somewhere. Come on now. But I'm using that background to kind of outline my petals. Another layer. Another layer. Yeah, the very first paint along I did was a sunflower, a single sunflower, and it was from one of the pictures of my from my garden. Uh, I was looking for that video. I was going to try and start putting them up on Face, I mean uh, YouTube, in order of when I did them a year and a half ago. The Videos that will go up on YouTube will be an abbreviated version. It's not going to be the full length painting session. Those will be found elsewhere 
in time. But YouTube will have about a fit. Now I'm going to condense these hour, hour and a half sessions down to about 15 minutes. I will have instruction, but it won't be our live paint uh, um, session. Okay. But you can still see the development of the paintings and the order in which everything is done as well and as an explanation of colors and uh, techniques. Now I'm picking up a little bit of purple and coming back in that darker area. Uh, I'm not going to get good coverage. It's going to want to blend with that blue. I'll come back later when it's dry and I'll get be able to get a really dark uh, color next to my flowers but I'm just putting a little bit in right now okay rinsing the brush really well okay make sure all right I'm looking at my drawing and this petal, these little petals right in here, this is bugging me. I think they're a little short changed. So I will. Uh, hey, Dottie. Miss Dottie's coming in from the Isle of Man gang. This is her afternoon. Uh, let's see. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it's been a real um, uh, distraction. The, the garden was good. The garden is excellent. The garden is, I love the, uh, working in my garden. Uh, this year especially, uh, for those of you who were following back in the, in the spring, I had, um, in summer, I had a biopsy and it took forever. It took months and months because of COVID. It's happening again, COVID. And... Uh, like I said, um, a lot of the, of the the nearby hospital is um, switching out its staff. Uh, they're suspending elective surgeries. They're suspending physical therapies, uh, and they are moving those those nurses to uh, help with the COVID patients because they're getting so many more. Um, people coming into the hospital uh, but anyway I had those biopsies and it took forever to get the results and while I was waiting so I didn't worry much you know you can't help but but you know I decided I'm gonna garden and I'm gonna garden big and I got all this stuff started out there and by golly gum well, then we had rains everything has really grown a lot uh, so let's see the kids harvested tomatoes yesterday and I think they got what is it 27 <laughs> I gotta do something with all these tomatoes okay I'm not gonna paint my yellow here because my blues not dry so but I can come in here I can come into the interior part and Gloria I'm picking up more white and I'm going to go start, you know, each one of these layers in the beginning, I'm just slapping paint in there. But if you notice each layer, successive layer gets slower and more deliberate. I'm using a smaller brush. And I'm putting down a little bit more white. And I got to watch it when I'm getting close to the blue because I don't want to touch that blue. I'll wind up with green petals. So that blue's got to really be set up. Now, this painting I'm doing is going to be very loose. But understand, after the session ends in about 35 minutes, if... 
And when I look at this, I'm going, hmm, and I'll start ditzing and I'll start detailing a little bit more and I'll lighten areas and I'll darken areas and I'll continue to finesse. But what we will have done in this hour and a half is get this painting blocked in and the series of steps to do will have been covered. But just because the camera ends, if you're painting along, doesn't mean you stop. And a lot of folks will come in because um, they'll come in and say hello, but they're not going to paint today. Uh, they're being supportive and encouraging. And again, you newbies, uh, these are folks, some of these people have been with me on this journey, art journey, for a year and a half. And I wouldn't be able to continue this without their help and support. And that's part of why they come in and say hi, because they know, because of the Facebook algorithms, that if there's activity in the form of a comment or a share, that more people will see these broadcasts. But just tuning in um, doesn't help get the word out. Uh, but if you are so inclined, and those of you who have been doing that, I really, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Uh, but putting in a little comment or even sharing on your page goes a long, long way. Okay, this is still not quite dry right here. I may put that down. I may just, yeah, this is this is really looking good. We are coming a long way. I'm gonna take about three minutes and put that down in front of the fan. So that blue will set up and um, I can fix those, um, I can fix those pedals. Hey, Lucy, good morning. Carolyn, good morning to you. Beverly, let's see, what shade of green? Okay, the green I'm using, I'll talk about that. Almost always with my greens, people. Let me get a clean brush here. I don't keep a lot of greens in my art. Um, oh, this is... I don't keep, a, wait a minute, I'm looking for a clean plate. <laughs> I don't keep a lot of greens. I mix my greens. And my base green that I use to mix with is Thalo green. All right, so here is Thalo green. When it comes out of the tube, it is super dark. It happens to be cool itself. All right, so if I come over here and I add white to phthalo green, look at this. I get a very cool, 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 almost like a turquoise. If I add yellow to the green over here, I get a limey, bright green. That's all coming from this base, okay? If I take like yellow ochre, which is very earthy, and I add that to this, I get almost like an army green. See how many greens I don't have to keep in my toolkit? Just by having phthalo green, I can go cool, I can go warm, I can go earthy. All right, and then depending on if I add white to that, And if I add white to here, look how bright. All three of those are coming from that base color of phthalo green. Uh, for you newbies, on the Paint Along group page, under announcements is a very short 
simple list of materials and supplies. I put that supply list up over a year and a half ago when COVID um, quarantine first hit and a number of people who were tuning in had always wanted to try painting but hadn't ever painted before so they didn't have a lot of materials and supplies or um, they um, hadn't painted in a long time and they didn't have a lot of art supplies. So I was trying to put up a skeleton list of your very basic things and then as um, and I went I went you know half a mile down the road to the dollar store to look and see because again I'm living in a rural community in middle Tennessee and any art supplies and whatnot is 30 40 60 miles away depending on which direction I go and for me I wind up doing most of my mail order I I order in um, but you know I was trying to, to uh, give some options to the folks so you've got all of these greens sunflower leaves are more this color this middle color here but I'm using a combination of the greens just to give it a little more interest. Okay, so this has been down there in front of the fan while I've been talking about my greens. And now that I've got my greens over here, um, I'll put a wash over some of what I had down before. I'm coming in closer to the flowers and darkening, mainly to add drama and they would cast a shadow closer to the flower and again this green that I'm mixing has more I'm using yellow ochre I've got cadmium yellow and yellow ochre down on my palette I could even not have yellow ochre and I could just take yellow with a little bit of purple and that would make an earthy yellow okay um, so it's very important to learn your uh, color wheel and to learn your complementary colors in other words the colors opposite each other on the color wheel because if you want to mix a darker color or mute like if you wanted to mute the yellow if it was too bright then you would add its complement and if you don't know what that is you don't know what you're adding a lot of people tend to reach for Payne's gray or black and if you do if you add black to yellow you're going to wind up with an army green not a darker yellow okay so i don't recommend using Payne's gray or black as your go-to darkening colors in fact i don't have them I don't use them <laughs> all right now um I have everything blocked in I have everything blocked in I'm going to put another layer on my background uh and I'm going to kind of avoid getting too close to my flowers because I'm going to go back and I'm going to work on my flowers <coughs> Okay, so Beverly, I hope that helps you uh, learning about the greens. Hope that was useful. The dark blue, Gloria, is thalo blue. Uh, oh, I yes, I do, uh, Dottie. Oh, hello. Oh, cats. Oh, dogs, cats. God bless. <laughs> oh, yes. I do uh, sun-dried tomatoes. That's how I, that's what I um, do to, um, I have a dryer. The first time I ever did sun-dried tomatoes, I had five, five shelves, five, five shelves in the dehydrator of sliced just jammed in there tomato pieces <laughs> by the time I got through drying them I could put them in a little jar of olive oil and I thought no wonder they're so expensive at the store it takes like a bushel to make a jar 
Golly. Oh, but they're so good. Oh, they're so good. And it's just such a wonderful thing to, to pull out in the middle of the winter. Um, and pesto. I've got basil in every one of my flower beds. And uh, it's time. It's time. Uh, it's beginning to flower. So i got to get out there. Keep pinching the flower heads off. But I love homemade pesto. Um, pine nuts are kind of expensive. Well, I have used walnuts and I have used uh, pecans in, instead of pine nuts. Lots of garlic. Uh, but last night we barbecued to, uh, over here was a holiday Labor Day. And uh, it's always the first Monday in September. And it's a traditional kind of in the summer. And we barbecued and a lot came out of the squash came out of the garden. Uh, onions came out of the garden. Tomatoes, peppers. Um, I like to grow hot peppers. So it was very satisfying. Green beans. I barbecued green beans. I did them on the grill with garlic and olive oil. And I, my grandsons actually ate green beans. I was so excited. Okay, I'm coming back with my phthalo blue and a little bit of purple to make it even darker. Gloria, look here. See how dark that is when I add purple to it? And then I'm going to dip into my cerulean blue and slap dash into that while it's wet. And look at that second layer of blue over that first layer that looks so uh, washed out and weak. Look at this. And here's a little bit of white in with the thalo, I mean the cerulean blue. The reason the blue and the purple look so good is they are complement the purple especially is a complementary color to the yellow. You put complementary colors together and they make the each other vibrate. Always remember uh, Christmas, red and green. You know, it is just, it's such a winning combination. Just decorating with red and green. But that red and green can be, you know, the red can be a rust or a salmon. It doesn't have to be red, red. The green uh, can be very muted very subtle, but still, as red and green together, side by side, they really look good. All right, let me get some paint down here, and then while this is drying, I'll check my comments. Uh, newbies, if you have a question, you can, uh, if you're shy and you don't want to put it down in comments, you can direct message me. Uh, I checked those. Uh, I haven't checked them very much the last couple of weeks, but <laughs> that's because I was on vacation <laughs> and I took it to heart. I was truly on vacation, uh, but I still, I get around to it. If you don't need an immediate answer <laughs> when I'm on vacation, but actually that's the first vacation I've taken in a year and a half since doing these. So... It, I, it was due. It was time. I needed I needed a break. Uh, I needed to tend to, and sure enough, I cannot do my Thursday abstract. Uh, I mean, my Tuesday abstract. I've been doing this every Tuesday morning, and then I switched to an evening abstract uh, because I'm tending to the boys. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are out. So it's probably going to be in the morning, either Wednesday or Thursday morning. I'm not, I haven't decided. I may float, but I'm going to do the same time slot. So I will be doing an abstract 
painting session at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, probably on Wednesday, maybe sort of on Wednesday. Don't know. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Lucy. Okay, good. Hey, Betty Turner. Lave, I couldn't, oh, I just, Betty, I just put it up a, a, like 15 minutes before the broadcast. <laughs> yeah, I got to get into the swing of things. It is there. It is at Paint Along Tuesday uh, group page, the pattern, uh, the black line, okay? This, guys, you will find at Paint Along Tuesdays, it uh, was the most recent uh, I usually try and put it up a day or two before the session. Uh, shame on me. I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it done this morning. Uh, but it's there. Now. It's there now. Okay. Okay. And if you notice on me treating this background, I am not doing a very smooth treatment. I want it very brushy, very painterly. I'm going to probably come in with a little more lavender and purples because that really is the true complement to our yellows, our yellow sunflowers. And now it's time to start getting more detailed. Okay. Finally there. Finally there. Miss Betty Lab, uh, uh, Jack and Betty bought a building across the street. They live in rural Smithville, Tennessee, about an hour from here. I have visited them several times in their studios, and uh, it is so cool that if the building that they bought was an old Methodist church that. I think COVID pretty much did it in. Uh, many of the parishioners had moved on to other churches or had passed away. Anyway, that building sat vacant. And they purchased it. And they had been renovating it over this past year. I visited when they had just gotten it. And they had been posting progress. I believe you guys are going to open it up during the um off the beaten path off the beaten path are they going to have off the beaten path this year um off the beaten path is over in smithville in DeKalb county tennessee and what they do is all of the participating artists literally open up their studios and it's a driving tour because um almost everybody lives out in a rural setting uh, and you drive from it doesn't cost you anything you drive from studio to studio and you get to see where the artists make their magic and you hopefully purchase something while you're doing it so it's been an annual thing i don't know for nearly 20 years i bet i'm guessing i'm truly guessing i don't know um uh, but it um, was canceled last year due to COVID. And then Jack and Betty are going to have their grand opening for their art center that weekend. Um, I haven't talked to Betty in a couple of weeks, so I'm not sure. And this recent COVID business has been pretty rapid. So, I just don't know. Okay, this area right here bothered me, so I increased the length of a couple of petals. They felt kind of squished. And a lot of this can be done at this stage before I'm doing my detailing. Now, I'm not going to try and detail the whole thing before I close up at 1130 or in about 15 minutes, but I will show you the process, okay? And I'm going to take 
this leaf right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna little, get a little more detailed on my uh, veins of my leaf and the edge of my leaf to make it pop. And I'm getting much more detailed around my petals as well. And you'll see what a difference it's going to make compared to the other ones. Okay. And again, if you have a question, you can put it down in the comments. I'll get back to you shortly. And or you can direct message me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay. In fact, I'm thinking very seriously of creating a web page that would allow for um, semi-private groups. Um, this is one of the things I've been toying with. This whole paint along has evolved and um, so uh, that's one of the things I considered while I was on vacation thinking about what I'm gonna uh, what I'm gonna do. I have stacks of paintings from this last year and a half. Literally. I mean, I've sold some, but I've got stacks and stacks of paintings and I need to do something with. And uh, so I'm going to I'm going to um, start putting those up for sale too. And um, well, several things are in the works. But I have learned this last year, I don't get in too big a hurry about stuff because too many things are out of my control. Uh, life just continues to unfold. All right, now see how much detail in a very short amount of time that I've been able to put on that leaf. Now that's gonna dictate what I'm gonna do to the rest of them, but it will move quickly. And then the same thing I'm gonna do here on the petals. And I've got a red brown that I mixed up. And I got a little purple brown. And I'm using that little brush I was using earlier. It'll be a little more realistic. And see, I'm going to cut that one down a little bit, not make it quite so big. Then I take that red brown and I put a little ochre in with it and I'm going to put a few highlighted seeds. Kind of a another inner ring. Then I've got all these different yellows here. I'm combining cadmium yellow and yellow ochre. That's what I've got on my brush right now. Really deep dark yellow. And some of my red brown is still a little bit wet.
look how quickly we start to detail. And then more white with a dollop of yellow. It's not pure white. It's a very light white, light yellow. Extend that leaf, I mean that petal, just a little bit. I can correct my drawing as I go. So see this little area right down in here is showing how I'm detailing out and finishing out and I'll continue that process. Uh, and let me do a little bit of the background. Coming in with more purple. This is pure purple I've got on my brush right now. And look at that. I come back in here and I'm just putting a light wash of purple and it just looks black it is so dark but that's because i've been layering looky here that's purple now i'm going to pick up just a little bit of white a little bit of yellow in it so it's a lavender look at that and a nice color and I just kind of scumble it over and around but look how much interest I've got in this little area right here and I'm going to continue doing that same thing all the way through my painting okay so that's an awful lot of petals to try and get done in a in a short time of with this class. The same thing, I'm using purple and phthalo blue and phthalo green and my red to make my dark, dark black. but it's so much richer than just plain black. And I layer, and I layer, and I layer. Okay. Okay, so abstracts will be in the morning at 10. Central Standard Time, uh, Dottie, um, Dottie Debs, that's going to be 4 p.m. your time. She tunes in from the Isle of Man, guys. Is that cool? And she's been posting her garden, a little patio area she's been working on. It's really lovely. My goal is to eventually have a little greenhouse I'd love to. I started little seedlings this year. <laughs> they didn't do anything. It was just a waste. I'm going to, next year I'll try little cachets uh, or cover areas with plastic. I'm not going to bother trying to start in seedlings indoors here. 
If I had a greenhouse, but this studio, there are no windows. Well, I, I take that back. There's one window, but it faces west. So it's really, really hard to do that kind of stuff. But I have discovered that many of my artist buds are also gardeners and cooks. We like to create. We like to do all these creative things. So for you newbies, this is an area we've got a lot of folks who, who will share what they're up to and especially their paintings. But you will notice they're beginning to talk to each other in the comments, so they're becoming friends as well. So this is, I call it more art therapy. Lots of hints and lots of hopefully good uh, techniques to use to add to your repertoire of skills but also a happy, friendly uh, place to, to come and share and knock back for a little bit and laugh a little and paint a little and make beautiful things. Uh, <clears throat> I've got to tally up the results to figure out what we're going to do for our next one. Like I said, the, the voting came in and it turned out to be um, very touch and go. I was really surprised. Okay. I will continue to do my detailing. And then I will put my finished piece up for everybody to see. And I hope you will do the same. Um, and I'm not sure... Like I said, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. Oh, hello, little one. Okay, I'm nearly through. Yes, I'm nearly through. I'll be much more patient with you now. As long as you don't try and climb my leg. All right. Okay, guys, um, that's going to finish us up for uh, today. I'll continue on mine. I hope you continue on yours and share with us, all right? And we will see you guys. Uh, the Abstract Gang, tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. And the rest of you paint alongs uh, next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time here at Lynn Looney Studios. Love you guys. Take care.